Chairman. I am Mehmet. I'm uh, from Monash University. This is a work between my group and, and a hospital in Australia. Uh, we are trying to develop a wearable continuous blood pressure device. Um, the, the blood pressure is, is a, a very important indicator for cardiovascular diseases. At this stage, the, the way is being monitored using one way is using invasive which is which is through the arterial line catheter and a lot of problems with that a lot of complications um and and, and you need to be very expert to use that device the second way is using non-invasive way to measure blood pressure which is the cough I'm, I'm sure some of you have used this already when you visit a doctor again a lot of issues you cannot do a continuous measurement using the cough uh, and, there's a, and there's a problem in terms of using it in a long term, in a day, and continuously. And most of the time, because of the inflation and, and the cough is causing some uncomfortable conditions. So the goal is basically to be able to develop a coughless device. So blood pressure at this stage is not being measured continuously. So all these existing devices they only measure one time. So when you want to con measure continuously, you need to come up with another technique. So there are uh, some activities using PAT, PTT, to be able to measure blood pressure. So PAT and PTT is a pulse arrival all parts transit time. That is when the blood being injected from the heart to the, when the pulse is arriving another point on the body. So you calculate that time and then you correlate with the blood pressure. So these are these techniques called false transit time and, and a pulse arrival time. So the way it's being measured, you have an ECG signal there, or peak of ECG, and then when that that is kind of triggering the blood being injected to the body. And then that blood arrives at some locations on the body, you measure the pulse arriving at that point. So this is called PAT. Uh, there have been some activities in that area. So those, those <laughs> projects, they have ma mainly used PPGs, an optical device, to measure the pulse arriving at some other parts of the, the body. Most of the, those existing projects, they're using a, a, a hand or a finger. So the the, when you use optical and PPG, it's still kind of like a cough. So you need to wrap around the finger or around your wrist to measure the pulse coming or arriving at that location. So when we started this project, we were more interested in something that we can design, like a patch to place on the body. So we come up with this patent and idea. We, we, we want to design a wearable device to be attached to the chest and, and then using ECG as well as bioimpedance. So that's the do, kind of the, the, our, our device is measuring bioimpedance to measure the pulse arriving on the chest. So we calculate PAT and then we map that to the blood pressure. So we, we, we also come up with this idea. We thought that's also easy. If you attach to the person, you can hide all these things under the clothes and it can measure continuously. So one thing I forgot to mention, when you want to use PAT, PDT, one drawback, you still need to calibrate with respect to the cough device. So there are a few reasons for that, but the important reason because people in medical profession, they are actually understand the cough device and the values they, 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 they get obtained from the cough device. So still we need to use cough device one or a couple of times in a day if you design it very well, maybe you can use it only one time a day to, to do calibration. Uh, when we started this, we, we did a clinical trial for our device. We, we added ad additional sensors to the body. These are the reason we added additional sensors. We just want to make sure the bioimpedance ECG together is giving you right signals and then we can calculate PAT and potentially PTT, this is, I'm not going to go into in, in this talk, that we can actually map to the blood pressure. And what we did, PPG, as I mentioned, there's existing some groups that are working on PPG to uh, calculate 
uh, PAC to map to the blood pressure, but they are putting on the on the finger or on the on the wrist. But here we put on the ear because we want it to be as close as to the body penis. Body penis on the chest as well. So we are targeting main arterial the the uh, signals as well. When you have a hand, the blood going there. Those are these are very not the central arterial uh, pressure. So we put on the ear. We wanted to compare to make sure that blood pressure, the body impedance signal, we're getting the right features from body impedance signal. So we we conducted a clinical trial using using our technique. Uh, this is just an example of a, a patient going on under the trial. We, we measured data for one hour. So this is a lot of data for each participant. So we had a lot, uh, 46, 46 participants. We collected data for one hour. That has given us a lot of data to process. So these are some of the tape to be added to make sure that the cable is not going to move. We're obtaining right signals because we wanted to make sure our algorithm we're developing is going to be as accurate as possible. Um, this is a GUI we developed showing all the signals we are collecting. And, and there are a lot of cables there. The reason we have those additional cables, we actually use the, um, the, um, the cuff as well as a continuous device, which is known as a Finopress continuous device. That is a cuff at the finger. The German company developed that is a $50,000 unit. It, that is the only unit we know that does continuous blood pressure measurement. It's, it's not clinically validated, but it's giving us uh, some signals to make sure that actually we, we're doing right things for our own signals. So in our experiment, we had two parts. First part, posture, lay down, sit, uh, that type of activities. And then we did exercise. So exercise is not easy to collect data if you're doing Medical signal monitoring, even ECG doing the exercise is, is not easy. But we did calculate our, our, our the blood, uh, because we are already on the chest, it, it's giving you that advantage. So even your exercise is not causing much trouble. These are kind of the profile of the, all the participants we use. This is, and, and uh, the way we, 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 we we collect data, we divide them into each condition, we divide them into data. We wanted to get cough twice because we know cough is, not, cough is not a reliable device, despite that that is the most popular one doctors are using. So we, we wanted to make sure during the sitting we get two cough. So we divide them into two and we're getting two cough just to make sure when we compare, we're comparing with the right data from the cough. And during the exercise, we, we get only one time. One thing during the exercise, we ask the participants to stop exercise during each session of exercise, and then we measure the cough. So that is towards the end of the exercise. When you do exercise, your blood pressure is increasing. It's giving you a chance when the blood pressure is increasing to so that your algorithm will be able to measure the blood pressure. We have, we have done a lot of signal processing. These are showing the block diagram. I'm just going to go quickly. So the, this, this is a snapshot of the signals we collected. There's one, the top one ECG, and then body impedance. So you can see the body impedance signal, there is a breathing right there. And during the experimental or clinical trial, we let participants to be normal. So we didn't tell, tell them to stop breathing all that. So when you breathe, it's causing a lot of problems to the signals that you collect because we want it to be a, a normal condition for them. And some of them, they talk a lot. So we let them just to talk. But because of that, we needed to do a lot of signal processing. So the bottom bottom one is doing the heavy exercise. And then we did some um, signal processing to make sure that we get clean, uh, clean data. And then we did calculations. Um, the way we did the feature, the first one is ECG signal, second one is the body impedance signal that's at the end we're obtaining at the chest, the PPGs were obtaining in the ear. The reason we, we used PPG as a reference here, we wanted to compare to the existing literature as well as because body impedance was new, we want to make sure we are getting the right feature. So we look at the, the PPG people are getting two points usually in the, for the feature, 
and we, 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 we obtain the same points for the binary pin is just to make sure whether these are also good points for us. And that's the time difference we collect and then we map to the blood pressure. The cuff unit uh, is not that reliable. So, but despite that doctors, they rely on, on the values they obtain that. The device that we got is a medical graded and according to them, there was like three millimeter mercury accuracy for the device that you use. And in the experiments, if we had an inaccuracy of 20 millimeter mercury, we didn't use that cuff device because we know that is not a reliable cuff value. So this is, we omitted that. So in a lot of cuff, we did test ourselves. The, the worst one was 15 millimeter mercury. I mean, they are still being used by doctors, but the worst one was 15 millimeter mercury. So we said, okay, if there is a inaccuracy of 20 millimeter mercury between two cuff units, then we can skip one of them. This is a method we, we followed. And the results was, was only 24 out of 258 recording. These are data from all participants. Uh, the cuff with respect to PAT values we calculated during posture and during exercise. Uh, the posture, you, you, we had more participants during the posture, we had only 23 during the, the exercise. We had some like participants, their, their condition was not, not great, we could not ask them to do, to do exercise, especially heavy exercise. Um, these are overall data, it's showing a trend that the cough and then our PAT is an opposite inverse relation. So we also look at all the data uh, average PAT from the bioimpedance PAT from, from, from PPG and then the calf values overall to see how the blood pressure and PAT changing with respect to your change condition. When you sit, when you stand, when you exercise, we want to understand the whole profile of the participants. And that is during the exercise, you can see when you exercise, your blood pressure is going to increase. That means your PAP is going to decrease. Overall, that is showing the, that result. And I'm, I'm almost done. Uh, and this is just an, in terms of we put in accuracy of, uh, in terms of percentages, and then we use some equations. So these two equations are quite common in the literature. Then we come out with these two. We said, let's use them as well to see as overall it's going to improve the accuracy. So that is BP with relationship with uh, PAT. Um, is that there is an inverse relation. There are like few formulas you can follow. We look at it, the the accuracy in terms of eight millimeter mercury to see how much, how many times when we calculate blood pressure is more than eight millimeter mercury. The reason we selected eight, there is a new standard is happening in IEEE for blood pressure, continuous blood pressure. They're using eight millimeter as a reference. So that's why we, we also started with eight millimeter mercury. So overall, we got some good results. And then our bioimpedance is, is very close and most of them actually was better than PPG. So we predicted that bioimpedance is important feature of the bioimpedance is slightly better than PPG, the features of the, bio, uh, the, the PPG. Uh, this is all the data. And then you can see that there, most of them are within eight millimeter mercury both during the exercise and during the posture results. Um, this is some initial uh, results that, that we presented in this talk, but we have a lot of data. Uh, we still need a lot of time. We're going to process all the data. These are kind of the results we have so far, but a lot more we need to do. Um, and then we also need to make the device quite small so that we, we can we, we did with the cough. Our next goal is actually to, to do a clinical trial with, with intra-arterial one, with, uh, and then just to make sure that overall the system is, is working. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.